Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Carolina Conversation. I'm your host, Shimon Williams, and today we have a great one with us. But before we give it to our great one, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to subscribe to the Carolina Conversation on your podcast uh, platform. And in the comments, please uh, give me comments that would be productive to me growing in this, uh, in this profession. And uh, uh, don't just talk about, oh, I like this, I like this. Give me some constructive criticism. I like constructive criticism. Your friends tell you what you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. But uh, but going back to our guest, man, he's one of the outstanding individuals that ever played at the University of North Carolina. But in my opinion, he is one of the best people to ever play at the University of North Carolina. I mean, he's been awesome. I mean, he came to the University of North Carolina in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. He hails from Bremerton, uh, Washington. Uh, he was a McDonald's All-American. He was also a first team parade all American and he brought a little different flavor from the West coast to the East coast. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one of our greats, Marvin Williams. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Marv. Welcome to the show. Thank you, man. That was a, that was a hell of an introduction. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I had a lot more. I had a lot more, man, but I'll be able to get, I, I'll be able to get into my personal thoughts about you uh throughout our conversation but you know we're, we're we're extremely grateful to have you on the show um you know like i've always told you I, i've always held you in high regard because of the the man that you know i met you as a young man you know, young man at that time yeah <laughs> Not a man but you know just the representation that you had for yourself for your family and uh you've always represented the institution well man but you know, so how, how are you doing, man? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. I appreciate it. Um, obviously, I appreciate you thinking of having me on here. Uh, it's always great to, one, get the chance to talk to you, but two, get a chance to talk to any Carolina fan. So, uh, but I'm doing well. You know, obviously, I'm recently retired, and I got a lot of free time on my hands. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, just trying to, trying to figure out ways to kind of fill that free time. I still train every day. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. I'm still in the weight room, still on the treadmill. Uh, I, haven't been, I haven't been back in the gym yet, surprisingly. Really? Um, I'm kind of getting the urge to kind of get some shots up a little bit, but I'm, I'm not ready to play like one-on-one -on -one or anything yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, you know, selfishly speaking, uh, listening to you, and, and I'm looking at a lot of these teams that need a lot of help. Uh, I know you decided <laughs> to retire, but it seems like you, you know, you keep yourself in that form, fit, shape, you know, just in <laughs> case somebody happens to call. You know, yeah. do, do you do you think, you know, I know you have to have that conversation with some other people, but do you yeah. think that there could be a possibility uh, once, you know, once you get a little stagnant and, you know, because that, yeah. that, that skill you have, man, is, is very, very useful in today's game for sure. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be honest with you. So um, when I got done playing basketball, you know, my daughter, you know, she's five years old. She was so happy that I was home. <laughs> You know, so obviously, like you said, I'm still kind of staying in shape, still kind of staying on the treadmill. And I think my lady kind of knows in the back of her mind, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. But I was talking to my daughter one day and I was like, hey, how would you feel if, if daddy went back to play basketball? And she just started shaking her head like this and her eyes just welled up. And I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, if you play basketball again, you're just going to be gone all the mm -hmm. time. And at that point, like, I kind of looked at my lady. And I was like, nah, I'm done with basketball. Like, I'm done. It was, it was, it was. For me, the decision to stop playing basketball was 100% about my family. You know, we'll always love the game. We always think we can play the game. And I'm only 34. You know, I still got a, a few good years left in me. But, you know, for me, the biggest thing is being a father. You know, when I became a father, my father told me the number one thing that I have to do in this world is to be a father. Mm -hmm. So the, the number one thing that I'm trying to do every day is just try to be there for my kids. So when she said that basketball is done, I feel like basketball is done. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that because yeah. from one Williams to the, to the other, that's the same reason I decided to retire. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it, it yes, sir. My... <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, so I can most definitely understand that. But uh, but let's 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 take it back in time. Let's take it back in time. Let's go back to two thousand three, two thousand four. You know, um, you know, one of the most heralded uh, young players out there in America could could have gone anywhere. Uh, what made you make the choice to attend the University of North Carolina? <laughs> Man, there was a ton of reasons, honestly. Um, obviously, my dad being from North Carolina, growing up, all I knew was Carolina. You know, um, gotcha. to be honest with you, I, I grew up watching Shemon Williams play basketball, <laughs> Anton Jameson play basketball. <laughs> like, I mean, that's, you guys taught me Carolina before I even came to Carolina. 
And then obviously during the recruiting process when Coach Williams was still at Kansas, uh, obviously I was considering there, but when he made the move to Chapel Hill, I looked at my dad and I was like, man, this is where I need to be. You know, this is all I've ever known. Obviously I wanted to stay home and go to the University of Washington with all my friends there. And I was really close to a lot of those guys there, but I knew that coming to Chapel Hill was going to be best for me and my family. And it certainly was, it worked out well in the end. Right, right, right. Well, we were most definitely grateful to have an individual of your caliber come to the University of North Carolina. And then, especially coming from the West Coast. I mean, for me, you know, I lived in Seattle and played in, in Seattle. So I, I knew the environment, but I did know how talented the kids were in, in that area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and to, to, to hear that you chose to come to the University of North Carolina, not, not knowing that your parent, your father was from North Carolina and, and so on and so forth. I thought that, you know, I said that, that, that took a lot because you don't find many kids coming from the West Coast all the mm -hmm. way over to the East Coast. So it, it, to me personally, it said something about you. And so uh, did you have any, any thoughts about going from the West Coast to the East Coast and, and, and being able to quote unquote, cause you know, there's a stigma in the West Coast being up and down as opposed to the East Coast basketball being a little bit more yeah. physical. Did yeah. you have any apprehensions about that? No, I felt like, you know, growing up in high school, obviously I felt like I could play with anybody anywhere. No question. Um, I wasn't too worried about the style of play. Uh, I just felt mm -hmm. like what the university, of, my, my ultimate goal obviously is to make the NBA. That's what every kid's goal was. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the University of North Carolina and the legendary coaches and the legendary players that have played there, look how many guys have played professionally and have been successful in the professional, you know, mm -hmm. arena. So I felt like if I had a chance to go to, to Carolina and I worked as hard as I could, I learned as much as I could, maybe I would just have an opportunity to get my foot in the right. door. And like I said, God willing, everything worked out for me. So I just felt like I knew what I needed to do. Uh, the distance leaving Bremerton to come to Chapel Hill, I mean, I felt like if my mom couldn't pick up and drive it, you know, a flight is a flight, whether she's got to fly two hours to California or five hours to North Carolina, she still would have to go to the airport and fly. Okay. So the distance, if I couldn't drive home, it didn't matter to me. So like I said, my dad, had, I had family down there. Um, I was coming all the way across with, from, with another West Coast guy from Oakland, Clinton. So yeah. uh, we, we, we really bonded, man, that year. So it was really good for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I remember I remember you guys when you first came to campus. And I had I, had, I knew Quentin. I knew of Quentin because I, I had Quentin at the NBA camp in Richmond. And okay. so uh, I, I, I had, had some conversations with him uh, actually before he committed to the university. North Carolina, um, but I remember you guys coming in the gym the first time and uh, just, you know, listening to you now, the one thing that always stood out about you, uh, which says a lot about, you know, you as a person, but more importantly about your parents and the way that you was raised was your humility. Like, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times when you're that type of kid with that magnitude, you know, you, you know, you're kind of used to certain things, but, you know, and, and you coming into chat. Apple Hill and coming into the gym that first time and, and not being able to play and, and going over to the yes, side sir. goal. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it, it, wasn't, it wasn't even a problem for you. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought back, I said, hey, man, this, this kid here, he, he's, he's a little different. You know, he's a little different, you know. Uh, and so my question to you is once you got to Chapel Hill, you know, what, what was going on in your mind? What was your thought process? And, and how was it getting acclimated? I think for me, I was so, so blessed. Um, man, I tell people all the time, one, the upperclassmen that I had, you know, when as a freshman coming into, I mean, those dudes from, you know, obviously Sean May and I are really close, Raymond Felton, Jawad Williams, Jackie mm -hmm. Manuel, Mel, I mean, those dudes, Dave Noel, like, I could not be more thankful for those dudes because you know how sometimes it is when a freshman comes to campus, okay. you know what I mean? Like, sometimes people can make things real difficult, but those dudes, man, from day one, I mean, they were, they, were, they were so great to us, man. They were so good to us, making sure that we were good, not only in the gym and on the court, but off the court. You know, they knew we came from the West Coast. That's a far ways away. They always made sure we didn't need anything and uh, we made sure everything was going well with our schooling. But not only that was, you know, you guys. You know, when you walk into a gym and you see Shimon and you see Vince and you see Twan, and you see Brendan Haywood and you see Rasheed Wallace, you know what I mean? These guys are playing, they're coming back every single summer playing pickup, you know, if, Shaman tells you to go shoot in the side basket. <laughs> you go shoot in the side basket. I mean, there's nothing to be, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, that's what we were told to do. I was like, man, it's just, I was done here. I mean, when, when yeah. dudes like that are coming back and playing, you know, you waited your turn. That's exactly what we did. So 
uh, it's just something, it was something that was never questioned. You know what I mean? We felt like that's how things are done here. That's how legends are made here. And that's what we were going to do. We felt like you guys had to probably do the same thing as us. You know what I mean? So it was nothing that we never questioned ever. Right. Right. The one thing that I did like, um, that I do remember a lot from you, uh, going into that freshman year was even when you would be on the side goals, you would still be working. Like, yes, um, you know, like even when we got to the end, be like, come on, we're going to let such and such play. Y'all going to play now. You would already be like in a full sweat. You know what I mean? Yes, like you would be working on, you know, you'd be working on you. And, um, and, uh, and so when you did get an opportunity to play, when you did begin to play, you know, it, it, you begin to stand out a little bit, you know, as a young freshman, you were standing out. And, uh, but you weren't, it wasn't like you were selfish. It was like your talent was showing and your ability was showing, but you were, you were willing, you know, willing to just do what you needed to do or play your role, which, yeah. which eventually ended up being extremely significant in that national championship run for you guys. And so leading up into that freshman year, uh, because you were playing good basketball, you know, that's the truth. You were playing good basketball. Um, and so when you, you talk about having those, those guys, the Jackie Manuels, the Melvins, the Jawads, the Shawns, and the, the, the McCants, and all the Rain Feltons, you know, mm -hmm. go on and on. Mm -hmm. how, how was it to have that conversation or know that uh, you were possibly going to be coming off the bench, you know, how was that conversation that you had with coach Williams or was there ever a conversation or, you know, can you, can you give us a little insight to that? Honestly, Shimon, there was no conversation. Uh, I will be 100% honest with you. Coach Williams out of my entire recruiting process, he was the only coach that did not promise me anything. And right. I appreciated that. You know, my right. father and my mother have always taught me to earn everything that you get. You know, you have to work as hard as you can. So I appreciate he, when he came to Bremerton, he told me that if I worked as hard as I could, I would have an opportunity to play. And I was fine with it. I can live with that. You know what I mean? Right. If somebody tells me that I'm going to work hard because I, I, I know how hard I work. You know, understand? So it, it, didn't, it didn't matter to me. So that, I appreciated that. And starting, not starting, playing, not playing, I, I just wanted a chance to play. You know, and mm -hmm. if I had to come off the bench, I, was, I had no problems coming off the bench. I played 20, 25 minutes a game. You know, I felt like I tried to contribute when I could. Uh, and, and it worked out for us. You know, our team was really, really good. Man. We were really talented. Mm -hmm. I don't think we we're as good as we were if, if the seniors that we had didn't go through what they went through throughout their career. Uh, the juniors that we had, if they weren't so talented and went through what they went through throughout their career. So I'm telling you, man, I was, I was the most blessed person on that team, man, because I had an opportunity to learn so much from so many different guys. Not only mm -hmm. the guys on my team, but again, the guys that were coming back every single summer to play and work mm -hmm. out. Right, right. Now, you know, we always talk about the transformation of a, the athlete and being able to come into this atmosphere and play basketball. How was the transformation coming to campus and, and <laughs> socially and going to class? Coming on campus being that, you know, the Marvin Williams, the campus. How, how was well, that like? First of all, I mean, you've lived in both. Obviously, being from the South, being from South Carolina, you know the South and the, and the Northwest are two completely different places. <laughs> right. So, man, when I, when I first got down there, I'm like, man, like, I'm kind of slow motion, but I'm like, these people are slow motion. Like, everybody <laughs> just takes their time with anything. The kindness, I think, is what got like Southern hospitality, that's very real. You, right. know, you hear about it, but that's, I feel like it's very, very real. You know, back home, you walking down the street, people don't really speak if they don't really know you like that right. but i feel True. like in the south like everyone speaks to everyone you know what i mean and it's right. it's really cool man it was really refreshing and i kind of i really appreciated it honestly but when i first got to campus you, know, you get a couple of highs or whatever but when that season started <laughs> like after late night i feel yeah. like that's when things really became different i feel like definitely after right. late night right now now playing playing your freshman year um there and playing against the, some of the competition that you were playing against, which, you know, you had played against some great competition in high school, but now in this environment, uh, was there anything that stood out to you that was, that was more difficult than, than you probably anticipated? Or was there anything that you thought that was going to be difficult ended up being easier than what you anticipated? Um, nothing was easier. <laughs> I will say that. Um, <laughs> The biggest thing for me, you got to remember, when I first got to school, I was 17. You know, I was right. still a boy. Um, yeah. So 
I think just the physical strength of not only my teammates, but you guys. <laughs> and I mean, you was like a point guard. We're still like pushing me around. Like, you know, I think the physical yeah. strength of like, okay, I'm really like this, there's like a level and then there's another level. So I got a right. long way to go, you know? So I remember lifting, you know, I was lifting twice a day at one point. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I told Jonas our strength goes, I need to get stronger. Like these dudes were throwing me everywhere. And honestly, yeah. like, I'm trying to like, man, if I can just wrestle with Big May, but Big May, that man should have yeah. been player of the year that year. You know what I mean? He's not really the guy you should compare yourself to. But right. I felt like, man, if I could just kind of hold my own with him, you know, I'd be okay with anybody. So I just worked as hard as I could, man, every day in the weight room, every day in the weight, sometimes twice a day in the weight room. Uh, again, I just tried to watch and learn. When you guys would come back and play pickup, I would listen. I would watch. Uh, I would watch film with the coaches. And uh, it was it was good for me, man. I've always been a great listener, and I've always, I always love to learn. And I really feel like it's been beneficial for me, not only throughout the course of my career, but just in life, period. You know, when it comes yeah. to being a father or – you know, trying to be a, a, a boyfriend or a husband or whatever you call it, what I would call it. Um, it's been good, man. It's been, it's been really good for me, but I've always learned to listen for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you do have a, you do have a, a different type of calmness about you. And uh, you've always had like a, um, let me make sure I say that you, you, you've always had the, you know, like you were older in the way that you carried yourself <laughs> and just the spirit, you know what I mean? Just, you know, like you, you always had that persona to me, you know, I never, you know, I remember, <laughs> well, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait for that one to so get to that point. But, uh, you know, just the way you carried yourself. And so let's get back to that season, because arguably in that season, you hit one of the most biggest shots of that season, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, against Duke, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right, right. Tell me about that. Take us through that, because... You know that 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 shot. Uh, you you know you you can find that shot in Chapel Hill on walls and uh, through on Franklin Street and and just uh, you know that enthusiasm that you brought to the team and and in and, and that game. Um, but tell me about that shot, man. Tell me about that shot. It was uh, <laughs> I've said it a million times, man. I'm just so blessed, you know, so blessed. It was one of those things. I was just in the right place at the right time. Honestly, um, Ray missed it. You know, obviously, we're always taught to crash the offensive glass, which is what I did, and bounced over Sheldon's head, who was, mm -hmm. you know, an All-American that year, you know, one mm -hmm. of the best rebounders in the country. So, you get an opportunity to shoot it. You know, I got it, shot it. I didn't even realize I got fouled. You know, I just felt like right. I had a clean look at it, so I went back up, and thankfully, I was able to make the shot and, and convert the free throw on top of that. So, no again, man, I'm just so blessed, man. Just, just right well, place at the right time. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. I'm gonna go further in the right place at the right time because going back from what you just said, at that point in time, you weren't as physical as Deshaun Mays and Sheldon's. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not gonna say that you just happened to be at the right place at the right time. I'm, I'm going to say that you, you had that innate instinct to be where you needed to be because if not, I mean, they could push you wherever you wanted to be pushed. Yeah. So knowing that you didn't have the physicality of everybody, you had to put yourself in a position that you could be in a, you know, in a place that you could capitalize. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think that says a lot about you more than you, you know, cause it's hard for a person to look at themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that you can look at everybody else, but looking at your, you know, from the outside looking in, it was like, you know, even when we played and even as I watch you today, it's like, you're never in the wrong place. You know what I mean? You have, I think one thing that stood out to me about you as a young man, which, you know, it can, you know, it continues to go with you as a man. I mean, even when I watch you play, but more importantly, like even when we was at Coach Williams, uh, when we dedicate the court to him, just mm -hmm. watching you, you know, you have self-discipline and that humility, man. It's like, you know, you don't, you know, I, I have self-discipline and I have some humility, but I don't have it to the extent that you have it, and I'm older than you. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, 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 it's funny. I'm not, it's funny you say that, but I don't get that if I don't see you do it. You understand? And I'm gonna give you an example. You probably remember this, man. You've done more ball handling than anybody I've ever seen in my life, ever in my life. <laughs> so I, I'll never forget it. It was late. I was shooting at the gym. In walks in Shaman. You had the two balls. You said, what's up, walked over to the far court, and you did ball handling by yourself for, I swear, had to be an hour. Had to be an hour. And you say, like, things like, you don't have self-discipline, but when I'm watching, I'm like, man, this dude's been in the league 12 years. You know what I mean? It's almost midnight, and he's still in here by himself. 
probably got to get it with his kids in the morning. He's going to be back tomorrow afternoon to play with us, shoot with us. You get what I'm saying? So, like, when you talk about self, this I don't get those habits if I don't see those habits. And I, like I said, you was a 12-year veteran at this point. So I'm like, man, if he's working this hard now, I got I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, like you said, I never looked at it like that. And I appreciate it. But no, nah, that's the know, truth, man. It, that's it, the it, truth. It, it, yeah. It, it takes one, it, it takes, but it still takes wisdom to follow. Because you weren't the only person that saw that, but everybody didn't do that. You know what I mean? Very true. Yes, and sir. uh and um, you know, the the one thing that I like I said, I've always appreciated about you is just the person. You know what I mean the basketball play is phenomenal, but the person is even greater. And you know that's why you know for me it was important for people, you know, for me to have you on the podcast because I don't think people, I don't think people well they they don't get to talk to you as much as you know I talk to you see, but they don't know yeah. the person like how outstanding of a person you are. You know what I mean? Like like I tell it, it you know when you start ranking like the people in Chapel Hill, man, it's like you number one and two, you know what I mean? Like, you know, everybody, everybody loves Marvin, you know what I mean? Like, I appreciate that. like you know, <laughs> could nobody do anything wrong with Marvin, you know what I mean? That just, you know, that's just how, especially us old, that's how we feel like, yeah, Marvin's that guy, man. He's, he's just, he's, he's just that person. And so, you know, how did it feel for you still in that freshman year, having an opportunity to play for a national championship? Man. Let's see, I've had <laughs> I've had two kids. Those are probably the longest days of my life. That national championship day was the longest day of my life. And I'm talking <laughs> about like the game was never gonna come. Like right. we're sitting in the hotel after shoot around. Sean had his dad's national championship game on, so he puts his dad's game on. We watch his dad's game, which was probably a bad idea because at that point we hyped, but we still got like five hours before you even leave. Right, and man. We just kind of sat around the hotel, and you know, I, at one point I turned my phone off. You know, the jitters were crazy. You know, I just mm -hmm. wanted to get the game started, you know, obviously. So uh, once we get to the gym and start warming up and get out there, you you felt good, you felt comfortable. But, you know, we we, we played a we played a hell of a team, man. Illinois was was number one all year long. You know, we, were, mm -hmm. we came in preseason number one, lose the first game of the year. They became number one and stayed there for the entire season. I think they lost to, like, Ohio State late, and, like maybe the Big Ten tournament or something. But that was a game that we felt like we wanted because they had been number one all year. And uh, we finally had an opportunity to play them. And, Guys played, man, incredibly well, man. It was a, it was a, it was a moment. It was definitely an experience I'll never forget, man. I'll never forget it. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that's that's one thing that a lot of us have to live vicariously through you guys, because we made it to the final four, and yeah, yeah. we never <laughs> win it. You know what I mean? And yeah. That's that's one thing that you know a lot of us regret. But when you guys won it, it was great for us. It was really great for me, um, in in regards, because being in Chapel Hill every year every summer um you know i was there when jackie and jawad and those guys didn't make the tournament and mm -hmm. they were ridiculed and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know they, you know we had the changing of coaching from coach doherty to coach williams but mm -hmm. you know just just seeing the culmination of those guys having to go through all that ridicule to becoming the national champions man it it, mm -hmm. it for me you know, being a you know like you know big brother, man. I just, I just felt just. I mean, it was like I, like I said, sometimes an out of body experience, man. I was just so happy for for you mm -hmm. guys. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, and then you know, and and for you at the point in time, um, because people began to see the talent that you brought to the table. Um, you know, there were some decisions that were going to needed to be made for you mm -hmm. moving forward. And so after winning the national championship, you know, uh, beginning to hear what people were thinking of you, how did that decision process go for you making the choice to leave the University of North Carolina to pursue your dream as an NBA basketball player? Man, at that point in my life, it was without a doubt the hardest decision I'd ever made. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I spent a lot of time praying, talked to coach a bit, uh, talked to my parents a bit. Um, you know, growing up, man, my mother and father, you know, they worked incredibly hard. You know, they both worked two jobs. You know, I, I remember growing up some days, man, when I wouldn't even see my mom. You know, she right. would leave for work 8 o'clock in the morning, come back at 5. Her next shift started at 6.30 till 10. You know what I mean? I'm in middle school. I got two younger brothers. So that's how I learned to cook and clean and, you know, take care of myself because, I mean, you had to grow up fast. So right. I had an opportunity to change all that for my mom and my dad. 
You know what I mean? But at the same time, still, Kill had a blast in Chapel Hill. We, like you said, we just won that as a championship. Right. So in my heart, I did not want to leave, but I felt like my family needed me, man. I, and I had an opportunity to change everything for them. So I just I took advantage of the opportunity, man. It was it was difficult. Um, it's not a it's not a decision that I regret. But if my family situation was different, oh man, I would have tried to figure out a way to get a fifth year in Chapel Hill. I would have I'd have stuck around for a while. <laughs> I'd have been around for a while, man. I'm telling you. I had to tell my life there. No, it was, it, was, it was a tough decision to make, man. It, it really, right. really was. Right. It was. Well, I mean, you made the right decision. I mean, you made the right decision, and, and the process that you went through was, was correct. Um, and, and you know, you had done something for the university that hadn't been done for a long time. So, you know, your obligation, uh, your obligation to a certain extent it was completed. Now, uh, knowing you and what you stand for and your, your family stands for, you know, tell me the process of of you coming back and getting your degree and working towards that. How's that process? Oh man, that was um, <laughs> that was that was that was uh. If there's anything in life that I'm proud of, you know, outside of being a father, it's, it's getting my degree because it's the one thing that I truly had to work hard for. You know, basketball, man, we're, we're got our gifted. We've been blessed to do it. You know, and you want to do it. Yeah. But to be, you know, 25, 26 years old in class in the summer with a bunch of like 17, 18 year olds, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, um, it became difficult. The first couple of years, it was fun because my classmates were still right. there. You know, I'm not that, I'm not that much older than everybody. So it was no big deal. But you know, I remember like, I remember my very last class, I was 20, I think I was 27 when I graduated. So I'm in there with like a 17 or 18 year old. And she was like, yeah, I remember watching national championship. I was in fifth grade <laughs> with my dad. And I'm like, yo, it's time to get out of here. Like, it's, 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 I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. It was crazy. Yeah. She was like my lab partner. You know, so I was like, I gotta get right. out of here. But it was, man, I went she back did. every year. You know, I coach, that was the one thing that coach asked me. He asked me to graduate. And I told him he knew I was gonna graduate. You know, my, my folks always taught me, you start something, you finish something. They never had to tell me to go back. I knew I was gonna go back. I never That's stopped right. going. You know, I was in class that next fall. I was online that next fall. So. Um, it took a while. It was not as hard as I thought it was going to be, right. but it, it was, it was, it was, it took a lot of work, man. It took a lot of work, but I encourage youngins all the time. There's so many one and dones now out there, not even from our school, you know, just from all over, you know, as young black men, it's, it's, it's good to be educated, man. It's great to have that piece of paper. Yeah. So I encourage them all the time, man, get with your counselors, get with whoever you got to get with because people will help you graduate right. and they pay for it now. I think it gets paid, but I was paying out of pocket on top of that. I pay my own money. Oh. So, and I was paying oh. out-of-state tuition. So they pay for it now. Man, there's no excuse for a young to not have a degree, uh, man. Go get it, man. Go we, get it. We're it's about plenty to talk of time. to Coach Wins about that. We've got to get that reimbursement, man. We got to. Oh, yeah. I would, I would love that right now. I would love all that right now. All of that. that. reimbursement. I mean, but, uh, you know, I think that's, you know, that 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 was one thing that I really, really, appreciated about you because I you know I was there in the summertime too so seeing you come back seeing you mm -hmm. come back was uh interesting I mean not interesting but you know it, like I said I was always watching you you know watching you watch and so seeing you come back man um I also saw the growth in you because mm -hmm. where when you were in high school you know when you were in first year you know you would play I would play against you and so mm -hmm. then having the opportunity to play with you. And so a lot of times, you know, a lot of times, like you said before, we out there playing, you know, it might be me talking or saying something and saying something. And and um and I I'm I remember I don't know what happened because you weren't you weren't one to say much. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened. We were sitting down I think in between the game and you said something to the effect of like man, we we got. I think they may have beat us. They may have beat us or something. And mm -hmm. you said something like, "Man, I can't let this. We ain't gonna let this happen, man. Like, man, we 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 gotta play." And I kind of looked. <laughs> I looked at you. I said, "How about that? He <laughs> he, he, he talking now? Okay, <laughs> he talking." Because I felt like this. I feel like once you guys begin to to take the lead on things that I could, I could kind of, you know, sit back a little bit, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. so you know, when that first time I saw you speak, I said, in my head I said, that's the first, you know, that's the first time I've ever seen him like, 
like say something because I you know I wasn't in your practices or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But that's the first time I had saw you say something, and I saw like you like I felt the passion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you can see it, but it's it's you know you perceive it. But once you in that environment with you, and I heard you speak, I felt I felt the passion, and I said, I said, okay, all right. I said he he got it, he got it, and so. From that point on, it seemed like for me, you began to, you began to like elevate yourself, not only in our environment, but I, I think, I think it began to show even in your NBA career as well. You know, what, mm -hmm. what made you, what made you take the steps of saying, you know what, man, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the college kid no more. You know, I'm, I'm Marvin, you know, I'm, I'm Marvin the man that people, that people celebrate and appreciate. You know what I mean? What? Because it was like a transformation, man. I promise you. It was like once some of you was just like quiet, you play. Mom, what you want to do? Okay, whatever y'all want to do. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? You was kind of like, mm -hmm. whatever y'all want to do, whatever I want to do. Then all of a sudden it was like, boom. You know what I mean? Like, I'm in control. You know, I'm in control. So what, and, and what made you, you know, what was the change? What was the change? Maybe you didn't see it, but I, I think saw. just. I, I think honestly, obviously, with age, you know, I think age obviously you, you mature. I think that helped a lot. Um, I think just trying to work on my game and understanding how to work. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, I learned how to really work when I got to Chapel Hill because that's what that's what we did, what we're built to do. Right. That's what we're made to do. You know what I mean? So I tell people all the time, like just just understanding how to work. So like we're in the gym and, you know, the young pups are, are beating up on the pros. You know what yeah. I mean? Coach gonna hear about that tomorrow. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna hear about that tomorrow. So like I'm like, yo, come on, man. if we gonna be in here, you know, we gotta go ahead and be in here. Yeah. You know, a lot of times for us, that's their first workout of the day. That's like our second, third workout of the day. <laughs> yeah. By the time we played in the afternoon, I had done that was probably my third workout. No question. I had lifted weights six in the morning, been to class, came back, got on the court for an hour and a half, and that's now right. we're playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I could easily just go home. Right. So like we can, man, we gotta if we're gonna be in here, we gotta get to it. We gotta work. We got to work. And I tell people all the time, I learned how to work in Chapel Hill. You know, I, guys like you, guys like Big May, Jackie, Jawad, like guys like that taught me how to work, how to do things the right way. But that's, mm -hmm. that's Chapel, that's, that's the benefit of going to a university like ours. A lot of guys, I mean, you talk to guys at whatever school, I might not bash any schools, but there are big schools out there where we're like, yo, OG's never come back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Coach that's there now, he don't care what we're doing. He's right. not checking on us. He don't care how we played last night. He doesn't invite us back to campus. But Coach Williams is always like, hey, pickups at three tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you want to play, weight room is yours if you want to lift. You know, so it's always right. been so welcoming, I feel like, for, you know, all the, all the, all the, all the uh, former players, but uh, in particular myself, man, there's, if I ever needed anything, you know, I'm two hours down 85 and I'm, I'm there. It's going to be taken care of, man. And that's just how the University of North Carolina is for, yeah. for players. Yeah. yeah. Now tell me this, going into the NBA, because uh, playing in North Carolina is a gift and a curse. <laughs> I always call it the gift and the curse because you're coached a certain way and you play a certain way. Then you get to the NBA and everybody else around you, you know, it's like, what is this? <laughs> you know, so, yes, sir. tell me yes. about your transformation of going from yes, college sir. to the NBA, man. I, I, tell me about that. <laughs> man, it was uh, it was it was it was it was a learning experience for me, no doubt. You know, we didn't have many conversations summer after summer uh, yeah. that, I, that I'm th that I'm thankful for. You know, even in season, you know, even in season, Shimon, I can honestly say, man, the the the, the encouragement and the text messages that you sent me throughout the course of my career have gone a long way, man. Just to let me know that you were watching, or just something that you could see that I can get better with, or. I mean, those yeah. things went a long way for me, a long way for me. But uh, it, it was a learning experience. And again, you know, I'm, I'm a pup. I, I had just turned 19. The draft was yeah. on like the 26th. My birthday's on the 19th. Right. You know what I mean? I, I just turned 19. So like, I'm a pup. And then I really, really, it was another level to it. Like, right. it's, you're not on campus anymore. Like, these dudes got families and kids. Like, they're right. really playing for keeps. <laughs> and like, and like yeah. you said, like, you come from a place in the summer where you get yelled at for not making the extra pass. <laughs> like, ain't, ain't no extra, ain't no extra <laughs> like, yeah yeah you know, i'm looking it, around like oh what is going on right now yeah See, now 17 you know all this time we can chip away at this if we do it together but 
you might get quick shot, quick shot, quick shot. Now you're down 24, and it's it's over no, with. And nice done. No, no question. Yeah. And like yeah, this so question is different. really good for you, someone like you, because you have NBA talent. Your talent is by far NBA talent. You don't have a selfish mindset. And so mm-hmm. for a person that's that's considerate of others and especially coming from I am in, uh coming from North Carolina, like you said, now you go into an environment, you thinking this you thinking this about okay, well what can I do to, to help the team win? You know what I mean? Like trying to do mm-hmm. with and then everybody else like, mm-hmm. nah, I gotta get these buckets for this incentive or, yes, sir. or whatever. So yeah, yes, sir. you know, it, it it it's good to hear that it didn't disappoint you as much, you know, because no, it was <laughs> it was I don't want to say it didn't disappoint me. I won't say that because I think my dad would say differently. Yeah. It was it was um uh, it was tough, man. I mean you you know you truly understand the business there of you basketball. You know you what go. I mean? Like it's about you know everybody's not living in the dorms no more. Everybody ain't walking the class. Like Shaman's making 25 million and I'm just on this 10 day. I'm trying to hang on. You know, what can I do to impress you know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you truly understand the business of basketball. No you know, question. and don't get me wrong, like basketball is what we do, it's what we love, but there's a, it's a different month. When you start getting paid for it, it it's, it's a different animal now. It's a, yes, it's a sir. different animal now, without yes, a doubt, sir. without a doubt, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. It was, um, you know, obviously you play on teams. I, I've, been, I've been blessed. Like, I've been really blessed to play with some good dudes throughout the course of my career. But as I got older, and this last few months that I have in Milwaukee, that was really cool to play with guys that are, you know, my age. You know, guys right. that have been there and done that. That are, you right. know what I mean? It doesn't matter if they score two or score twenty. You know, they're not right. letting you score tonight. You know, they're gonna That's dive right. on the floor. They don't care if they get six rebounds. Like it was, it was really kind of cool to play with, play with dudes um, like that. My peers, you know, guys that are my age that are looking no for the question. same thing. Yeah. No question. Yeah, that's what I kind of tell the young guys. I told, told, tell the young guys when I do get out there and play, I tell them, no, I can't. You can't play with me. You ain't old enough. <laughs> It don't mean enough to uh, uh-huh. <laughs> you. Ain't gonna go home talking about me today. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir. yeah. You know, but but those are things like you said before. You know, now that you say that, being able to go back to Chapel Hill and then you know play against those guys, and and see, you know, they get to see, you know, even us in old age. I mean, what three years ago we were all back there playing, mm-hmm. and uh, those kids got to see how much it really meant to us to win. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we didn't. We didn't care mm-hmm. about who was getting the shot or whatever. Mm-hmm. We were going. We were trying to win, mm-hmm. do whatever it took to win. You know what I mean? Yes, and and, uh, um, and like you said before, I think in today's game, a lot of that is missing because it's it's so individualistic, and you know they have so many other thought processes about what should be happening. Uh, it was good to see you, you know, in in Milwaukee. And and having a big role in what they were doing, and and I I know uh, you know I know it hurt them when, when you said <laughs> they <laughs> they were quiet, they were counting on more they were counting on more so uh, so now man you know being retired being retired and sitting in the house every day uh, have you given any thought to what you may want to do you know you you may choose not to do it but is there any thoughts to what you think you may want to do? Yeah, there's a ton. Um, with the league office, maybe like four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. It was a while ago. Probably like four or five years ago. But I did, I did a week-long internship. Now, let me tell you what. Going from practicing from like 11 to 2 and your day is done to like really getting up at like 7 and being in the office from like 8 to 5, 8, I'm like, yo, what are we getting out of <laughs> Like, what are we getting out of here? This is crazy. It was, it was such a wake up call. I could, oh my goodness. I'm like, man, like, you know how people say, like, the, the real world, you know, basketball athletes do not live in the real world, especially basketball players. Like, I'm telling you, 11 to 2 is a long day. You know how it is. There'll be some days you come in and just get up 30 minutes of shots, go on. Right, right. You know, but I was in there, I'm like, oh my, God, we got to get out of here. Like, so it was, it was such a great experience for me, though, man. I was so happy I did it. Uh, I had a chance to meet so many great people, right. so many people that have been so helped you know, in this process of going from player to retired player. And um, I, w- I want to get back up there, man, and kind of work with those cats in the international basketball uh, department. You know, obviously traveling the world and teaching young kids the game. Yeah. You know, they're going to so many different countries now. They're trying to grow, you know, the game of basketball. And I think it's awesome, man. So to be a part of something like that is what 
what I really want to do. Yeah, it's interesting, man, because I, I, I say myself, if if I don't get back into coaching, if I'm not best to get back into coaching in the next year or two, I think we're going to make a choice to, to go to Spain. And so if we have a house there in Spain, go and stay in Spain and, and okay. teach the game there and, and okay. grow up in that environment. Just give, you know, like you said, give a different, give them something different perspective on life and culture and uh you do yeah. a lot of tra uh, traveling yourself you know yes sir but uh i do i do have a suggestion for you uh, i do have please. a suggestion for you please <clears throat> please i think that you can be the athletic director at the university of north carolina <laughs> that's my responsibility man yeah 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 <laughs> hey, that's my responsibility, hey, man. But, you, but you know why you know why i think that i think that you are the epitome of what we are you know what I mean? Like, um, and that's nothing against anybody else, but for you, like, like you and Coach Smith, like, <laughs> Coach Smith would have, <laughs> he would have loved you, man. He, <laughs> he would have been Marvin Williams Smith. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> just what you, you know, just what you, you know, just what you bring to the table as a person. You know what I mean? Now, you, you know, like I said before, your athletic attributes are awesome and everything that you've done, but um, I think that, you know, the way that you handle yourself, your temperament, your humility, uh, I think that you could be, you know, nothing against Bubba and nothing against other, the other guys, but I think that you could be an intricate part in our institution moving forward in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Especially especially being a, a former athlete, um, mm -hmm. because you understand both worlds. And so um, there's there's a, I think that there could be a place for you. You know what I mean? You know, associate athletic director working with some of you know our young greats. But I I think you know because here it is. I'm older than you, and you've always you know to a certain extent followed me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm telling you, at 45, I would follow you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If I had to trust myself with somebody, you would be that individual that I would. You know, Mark would say, "Do it." I, I'm, a, you know, a lot of other people. I, you know, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> They're my brothers. I love I them. Appreciate that. Well, wait a minute. If you say, you know, if Mark say, "Hey, let's do." Okay. All right. All right. I can. I can follow you. You know what I mean? And I appreciate and that. When you start getting older. You start getting older. You understand that. You know, you have your place, but there's also a place for young people to lead. And mm -hmm. And for me, I'm not going to follow anybody. Mm -hmm. I've worked too mm -hmm. hard to be who I am mm -hmm. and where I am and, and for people to entrust themselves with me. I'm not going to follow just anybody. I'm mm -hmm. not. But yes, sir. who you are and what you've shown me and you've shown us, I think that many, many people would, many people would, would, would love an opportunity to follow you, uh, your direction, because uh, you, you are you know, you are a class act. You have always been a Thank class you. act. And um, you. and that's something, man, that you, you, you know, you should, you know, your parents most definitely should, you know, they, they're happy about that. But man, you, you should, you should appreciate that, man, that, that, you. Uh, you know, that we, we feel that way about you. I mean, that's Thank just, you. that's just how much people love you, man. I mean, like <laughs> my wife, <laughs> my wife, we still have the toast oven you bought us for, our wedding. <laughs> for the wedding, the knob came off, and so you know, I was like, "Well, the knob came off. You probably got to turn this thing off." She said, "Uh, uh, Marvin bought this. <laughs> he put pliers out. We got pliers up under there. <laughs> you look at what they look like. Got Marvin toaster oven right there. And so right you know, it, it. You know what I mean? Like just real. You know, I can take right it downstairs on. and see it. You know, but people do hold you in high regard, man. And you've been a great individual for our institution, man. And and uh, if there's if there's a way for you to be in that uh, administration position to help the institution move forward, I, I think it's something that if it works for your family, you and your family, right. I think that's something that you should look into. Right on, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Yeah, and look into it. So, all right. My last question to you, man: Have you got a chance to watch yes, the sir. Hills play this year? I'm looking forward to it tonight, man. So I talked right, to a right, couple right. guys last night and. I heard that I mean, they're supposed to be at the, at the it's the Maui Invitational, but they're in Asheville, right? Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't know how they ended up. I mean, I get if you can't go to Maui, maybe like San Diego or 
<laughs> Florida. I said, they stuck them in the mountains in Asheville. I know it's probably cold up there. I know they was looking forward to that trip. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's always a big time tournament, man. They got a lot of good, te good teams there. We got a ton of talent on this team. So I'm really looking forward to seeing those guys tonight for sure. Yeah, for sure. yeah. I had the opportunity to watch them play against the College of Charleston, and they did some good things. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of responsibility placed on the guards. Um, yeah. Uh, which is Absolutely. which is good. <laughs> yeah. Get responsibility. That means you're gonna get to play. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, hey, you played more than I played as a freshman, so you yes, know, sir. You happy about that? But uh, um, they 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 look really good. They re look really good um, interior wise, and the guards play really well. And so um, a lot of times, I think we're gonna have to play inside out. Uh, what mm -hmm. we playing playing inside out and then uh, make the game a little bit easier for the guards. But they, they have some great talent, and I think Coach is doing a great job with them. Yeah, yeah. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to seeing them play, man. I, I really am. It'll be a good game tonight. Yeah, yeah. I'm Hopefully, God permitting, I may shoot up the road because it's only 45 minutes for me. So. Oh, okay. You right there, yeah. then. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm right at the Maui Classic. Right man. I've been away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be cold and, and rain up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. Well, Marv, man, I really appreciate you participating on the podcast, man. It's it's a Thank it's you. an honor, man. It's an honor Thank to you. have you. Yes, sir. You know what I mean, uh, man. Congratulations on a great, great NBA career, man. But I'm looking forward to to watching you go to even greater heights in this life after basketball, man. And so, yes, sir. You know, you know always always held you in high regard, man. I love you. I appreciate you. Oh, and, uh, Thank you, man. No, God permit, man. If I can help with anything, holler at me. But we, we yeah, appreciate you know it. Yeah, I will. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yep. All right. You take care. Yes, sir. You too. Talk to you later. All right. Later.